गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट आई डॉक्टर कैलाश सानक फ्रॉम एन बी मेहता साइंस कॉलेज बोडी वेलकम्स यू ऑल इन माई थर्ड लेक्चर ऑफ इंट्रोडक्शन टू दाइस्ट ऑफ इंडस्ट्री वी हैव सीन इन टू लेक्चर्स रिक्वायरमेंट्स ऑफ डाइट्स देयर फास्टनेस प्रॉपर्टीज देन नेचुरल डाइट्स नाउ लेट एस सी इन दिस लेक्चर limitation of natural dyes limitations of natural dyes we know natural dyes are extracted from a huge quantity of a animal or uh, animal or a vegetable matters natural dyes are extracted from large quantities of animal or a vegetable matters so in vast amount we require this animal or a vegetable matter and from that vast amount of animal vegetable matter we will get just small quantity of animal or a vegetable uh, animal or a vegetable natural dye and these animal or vegetable natural dyes are having so many limitations again okay see first of all this extraction of dyes from any animal or a vegetable matter has <coughs> number of limitation so it is a very time consuming process it is very laborious process and it will require very huge manpower okay again see these dyes extracted dyes is lack a uniformity in quality these extracted dyes lacks uniformity in quality that means somewhere these dyes are having bright shade somewhere these dyes are having lighter shades so there is a lack of uniformity in quality again these extracted dyes have light fastness poor light fastness properties these natural dyes have natural dyes have poor light fastness properties again next issue is what availability of these natural dyes availability of these natural dyes that means suppose if i have to synthesize indigo dye then i have to cultivate oh, that indigo fairy tinctoria plants in a farm so when we will cultivate when we will grow this indigo fairy tinctoria plants in a farm so this depends upon what environment climate seasons okay suppose some uh, sometimes a rain uh, suddenly rains come snow falls come then again there will be a destruction of that crop of indigo fairy tinctoria that means it's not that much feasible that we will get that natural dyes that means uh, sources for natural dyes very easily next is what uh, this uh, natural dyes having one more limitation is what it's undergoes very uh, it undergo very quick fading of color that means the fabric which is printed from natural dyes it undergoes very quick fading of Color that is what phototropism we have seen it earlier. Now cost wise, if we see natural dyes are much more costlier than synthetic dyes. How we can say this? Suppose if we have to dye a five gram of fabric by natural dyes and same five gram of fabric by synthetic dyes, then we will require too much costlier that natural dyes to dye that fabric. That means. the amount the cost will require to dye that 5 gram of fabric in natural dyes is much more than synthetic dyes so these are what the limitations of natural dyes so hence natural dyes in day to day life now replaced by most of the synthetic dyes and we are going whatever whenever possible by synthetic dyes only there are limited dyes which are till coming from natural sources let's see next slide let's see next topic development of synthetic dyes as important milestone in 1856 a famous british chemist perkin he has synthesized first natural first synthetic dye mau or mauin from aniline he has synthesized first synthetic dye okay from aniline that is what mauve or mauvin in 1856 actually he was trying to prepare medicine for malaria actually he was trying to prepare 
medicine for malaria disease and at that time he discovered this dye through serendipitously now in next turn perkin also synthesizes another dye sapranin perkin has also synthesized another dye sapranin this dye was used for dyeing wool and silk this dye was used for dyeing wool and silk and he has also used some mordants like tannin and sodium stannite to get brighter shade he was also used some modern like tannin and sodium stannite to get a brighter shade in 1858 john peter grace discovered dye azotization reaction in 1858 john peter grace discovered dye azotization reaction we know dye azotization reaction is nothing but what we have to prepare a diazonium salt we have to prepare a diazonium salt from amines and that diazonium salt we have to couple with another coupler like phenol like another amines so this john peter grace in 1858 discovered one of the big reaction in dye stuff industry that is what diazotization reaction and he has prepared first azodye from diazotized aniline and alpha naphthyl aniline amine he has prepared first azodye from diazotized aniline and alpha naphthyl amine later on in 1865 bismarck brown this bismarck uh, bismarck brown dye was synthesized and in 1869 this aniline yellow dye was synthesized now later on in 1880 in 1880 von beer von beer has established was von beer has established structure of indigo dye he has established what structure of indigo dye indigo dye was used since ancient times by earlier peoples but the structure of indigo dye at that time up to 1880 was not established so von beer scientist he has discovered the structure of he has established the structure of indigo dye and followed by many indigoid wet dyes are come in the pictures in 1884 botiger had synthesized congo red dye in 1884 botiger has uh, had synthesized congo red dye by the reaction of benzidine with two moles of naphthoic acid by the reaction of benz, uh, benzidine with what two moles of naphthoic acid this congo red dye is water soluble dye hence it is also used to dye cotton directly okay that what i have written there already it's a water soluble dye hence it is used to dye cotton directly In 1893, Raymond Vidal discovered sulfur dyes. In 1893, Raymond Vidal discovered sulfur dyes by the reaction of para nitrophenol or a para amino phenol with sodium polysulfite. So these sulfur dyes are having also very importance in dye stuff industry. Now in 1901, in 1901, Rene Bon scientists has had discovered indanthrene in 1901 rene bon scientists had discovered a indanthrene dye by the reaction of two moles of beta amino anthraquinone by two moles of beta amino anthraquinone is reacted with what caustic potash so we will get what this indanthrene blue dye and then this is what indanthrene or it is also called indanthrene blue and this is what nothing but a first anthraquinone based wet dye this is first anthraquinone based wet dye followed by so many anthraquinone based wet dyes came in picture later on in 1918 dispersed dyes were discovered for example dispersion of anthraquinone dyes okay dispersion that means what we have to make dispersion in some solution so so these disper dyes were prepared in 1988 sorry 1918 and finally 
that coumarin derivatives many coumarin derivatives like 6 7 dihydroxy coumarin ambuloferrin acetate and beta methyl ambuloferrin uh, which are used as fluorescent brightening agent for textile these are used as fluorescent fluorescent brightening agent for textile so this is what about introduction to dye stuff industry this is what our first chapter introduction to dye stuff industry we will stop here thank you very much